<laughs> well, he did two things that were crazy. One, I had a girlfriend, and he was like, ah, that's so lucky. I, I never even kissed a girl till college. That's a crazy like, thing to tell Whoa, coach. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I respect you less. <laughs> wow, coach. Oh, I man. have a vision uh, of uh, the kind of man you also, are. <laughs> I'm 16. Don't Holy talk crap. to me about this. <laughs> Holy shit. I didn't realize you're a fucking loser, coach. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not running the sprints. Yeah, wow, coach. I'll never take another uh, <laughs> advice from you again. I'll never so, take direction from you ever. Exactly. You said that. Coach, and then... get on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Give me 20, coach. You didn't touch the line. This is why you can never be with anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you pick up the balls after practice, coach? Yeah. So That's how said you want to clean up? You'll never satisfy a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Wolf Family Therapy. The doctors today are Jamie and Tyler, and the appointment will start briefly. Thank you for patiently waiting. The brothers will see you now. That is one thing I really dream of doing soon. Shaving your head? Shaving? Oh, yeah. Just buzzing it off. Oh. Just as like a, just to, don't you think it'd feel nice to just go, no, this isn't. Yeah, no, no? I, I get that. There, there was some article I read about how cutting your hair, it, it, it can be an emotional reset for some people. Wow. Like when you go through a breakup, it's recommended you, you get a haircut. Really? Yeah. It's like girls getting bangs or something. Yeah, exactly. It's like, uh, it's like taking mushrooms. Yeah. 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 It's like... <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of right. It is sort of like it's kind of the first, mushrooms. you know, it's a lighter dose. Yeah. Do you do exactly. mushrooms, bro? No, I get haircuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I just randomly just will snip a piece of hair. <laughs> I'm microdosing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit, a little off the Tiny top. Bit. Well, I used to be really particular about my hair because it took so long to figure out a haircut and how my hair worked. That makes sense. So yeah. then the idea of someone just fucking going and doing it themselves was so crazy to me that I think I was like, damn, that's so free to just take a, like a two guard and just do it yourself. Yeah. Did you, what did you, what was your hair like in high school? Like did what, it go what, through what, what, phases? what was it before? Like a fro? Almost? Yeah. That's sort of uh, a, when I was younger. I don't really know because when I was younger, I would get it thinned out all the time because I had like okay. just a fluffy kind of, it was like just a lot. It was just like a mushroom kind of thing. Yeah. But I really wanted to, this is mid 2000s. So I was like, oh, I really want to be like a skater. I wanted the yeah. little hair that comes up, you know? Yeah. Like under the hat. hat. Oh, under yeah. the hat. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wore hats for, I think I wore hats all of middle school. <laughs> just because, hoping just that would hope, happen. And it, it would happen a little bit. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'll oh, totally. even with the curl? With the curl. Well, I didn't have curl though, because I would, oh. I would, they would literally thin oh. the whole thing, oh. which now I go get haircuts and they're like, that's crazy that they would do that to your hair. Yeah. Um, so I just had kind of like a, like a plop of just round, I looked like a kind of like a Lego piece thing. And so then, what? yeah, it was like, it was, there was That's no so texture. Different. Yeah, it was weird. And then, and then in high school, I had a buzz cut. The whole a of high buzz school? Cut? A buzz cut for probably two years. And then I had a fucking, I would go to the side. I would gel it to the side and I had like a part. Like a, like, like I look, a, I look like, holy I, fuck. like a, like prohibition, like whiskey guy. <laughs> <laughs> it was like literally like that kind of hair. <laughs> I'll give it an Al Capone cut. Yeah. I literally wanted to be, I was like, I guess <laughs> Damn, I'll try that. Dude. And then dude, it took so long to figure out <laughs> what to do. Did you think it was the coolest shit ever? I thought I was it? like Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, I was like, this uh, is sick. I wanted the little swoop <laughs> thing. <laughs> and I had a part too. I had, they would shave a hard part in oh, like the no, line. Oh my God. God yeah, dude. boys. And no beard either. I mean, it was a different, I was a different oh, person. I was going to say, this is such oh, a different whoa. guy. I've been through probably 15 phases of my life. Or Whoa. different people. Not okay. actually, just different styles. And and it's based on the hair you have. Yeah. Yeah, haircut. Yeah, it all stems from the and hair. And pants. I noticed that too. I've had, I've never had for more than a, probably a couple of years, maybe a year or two, the same cut of pants. I've tried every kind of jogger, tight, skinny. You were trying to be, You. I'm sure you did skinny when you were pretend to be a skater, right? In middle school. You did skinny jeans. Yeah, I think that was yeah. the... Yeah, we had a big pretend to be a skater phase. Yeah, that, we would, that was huge. We, 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 it was just a bunch of kids from the suburbs. Yeah. None of us knew how to skateboard. We would just like hold them and just kind of go around skate parks. And no We could ride way. them a little bit, but not really. I think one kid could do like a kickflip. <laughs> <laughs> and and everyone else was under that. Yeah. One kid could ollie. I yeah. could kind of stand on the board for a minute. <laughs> Which is funny because to go to a skate park and want to be so accepted and then just look like the yeah. least qualified person to do there. Totally. Backfired, I imagine. Yeah. No one's like, damn, let's hang out with the guy who's holding it on his shoulder. Because you think you're you think you're being coy. Like you think you're like, they don't know that I don't know how to I'm just like tired right now, you know? They, they probably think I got it in earlier. You know, you're like, oh I dropped in way early. You go, you guys go, you know, you guys work hard, you know, I don't want to gatekeep. 
But they totally are like this fucking yeah. pussy. Oh my <laughs> no God, idea. I hate this guy. Yeah, this, taking up space in the skate park. Yeah, this would guy's mom like, is in the would, parking lot. He's <laughs> 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 taking pictures. <laughs> Would you like practice? Like, would you? Were you trying to get better, or, no. or was it the equivalent of someone like going to the gym, just like with the wrist guards and just walking around? That's just, a great analogy. Yeah, right. It was the guy with yeah. the chalk bag yeah. at the gym, or whatever. Flexing in the mirror. Yeah. I think I. Tr- I think I wanted to try for a little bit, and then just the fear of how uh, how much pain or injury you could cause yourself was like, I don't care that you know. I was never a rambunctious kid. Uh, I was always very cautious uh-huh. uh, because I chipped my front tooth when I was younger on like a th- on like a little scooter thing. Okay, I just fucking hit my thing and knocked my tooth Fuck. out. So I just oh from then on I was always I never you know I never roughhoused or whatever. God, never and everyone in the tree. gang starts to skate away. You're like, I'll catch up with you guys later. Dude, yeah. You I have, have a skateboard. A, I was wearing a mouth guard in basket in sports. Oh, no. I was the kid with a mouth guard. Oh, yeah. My no. parents were like, you can play where you have to have a mouth oh, guard. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was more them than you. Or yeah. a mix. It was the it was their anxiety kind of projected through me that I was a very anxious oh. kid about Physical injury. Physical injury, germs, har- general harm. Wow. Yeah. The, the mouth that- card basketball kid is never good. Never good. <laughs> Were you good? I was I was okay skill wise in okay. a game I wasn't good. Oh uh, okay. Because I was so really nervous h- about getting hit. Yeah. Well, no. I I wish it was that. <laughs> I think I just never. It just wasn't for me. You know. Yeah. You don't realize till you find your thing. Like with comedy, that I'm like, oh, here's my skill level and my work ethic matched. But in sports, it was always like I would work really hard, but just had no natural. Yeah, that's the interesting thing about yeah. sports is they say it's hard work, but really it's like every single athlete, not every single, but really most athletes work hard. Right. Almost like yeah. when you're in the suburbs, you don't have time to do much else. So you just work on, you know, you just like shoot hoops and work on being better at basketball most of the time or for us baseball. Yeah. But like what separates you is, is some people are you and then some people are six foot 10, 200 pounds and they're LeBron James. Yeah. So I always think about that with soccer players. Cause they're like all these fucking like, uh, you know, whatever American football. Yeah. Like not what the foot one, the foreign one, the one Europeans play that soccer. Yeah. I was thinking about it with them because they're all like, they all of them started when they were like seven years old yeah. or whatever. But then there's still guys that are like Messi or like Ronaldo. Yep. And you're like, well then how does, what, what justifies that? They've all been playing the same amount. There's some people are just like, you should, this is what you do. Yeah, exactly. And most people should not do that. We need to stop telling kids that they're going to make it. In oh, sports. as yeah, athletes. Yeah. yeah. Sports should be like a fourth hobby thing. I can't believe how popular sports are yeah, in young kids' really lives. really dumb. Yeah. It's so dumb. It is really stupid. It's so stupid. I mean, I think the only thing it applies, it's like, I guess, kind of a work ethic thing. But then there's a lot of kids, you know, I guess this runs counter to the point I just made. There are a lot of people that play sports and like them, but they don't really work that hard, even though they're passionate about it. And you're like, what is that teaching you? Yeah, how to half-ass something probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. how to half-ass how to something you like by. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, why totally. this country's full of divorces because we teach kids yeah. who aren't passionate about sports to keep playing. Because you sound like a coach that's like, if you don't touch the line on the sprints, if you stop <laughs> here, that your wife's gonna divorce yeah. you. <laughs> She's gonna leave you because you don't yeah. have it. Totally, it's, it's so, clearly me projecting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was kind of what coaches would do though. They they were these grown men that would say things to kids that were that like. Were so I remember crazy. one time a coach told me, "You don't take responsibility for your actions." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Dude, I'm 15. Yeah, why would I?" <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, it was insane. <laughs> I don't respect anyone yeah. else's yeah. obsession uh, outside of comedy. If you're obsessed with anything else, well, go, comedy, that's not worth it. comedy is the only one that matters, and it's the only one that affects people's lives yeah that's how we do view it that's what's (laughs) fucked up is that in our brains when we insult sports or whatever that's someone's whole world and we're like it's way it's way more important to way more people sports of course no the difference is comedy is actually doing good in the world (laughs) (laughs) people actually enjoy watching comedy no one actually likes sports they're faking it (laughs) they know they're unhappy it's it's scripted you know what i will say it's really nice to not be on social media that helps a lot you are unplugged. I look at your... You don't follow anyone anymore. Because, yeah, no. And I don't even have the app on my phone unless I post. Yeah. I schedule my posts in advance. Unless I need to post something specific, I don't go on. Yeah. So, like, I literally can't go on Instagram un- until the day I need to do something, and then I post it and delete the app again. Wow. But it's interesting because I'm like, it's nice being tuned out because I don't resent anything. Yeah. You know? 
I, I just don't like stuff. People get stuff. I'm like, good. Like I don't, it doesn't affect me. Sure. That's a and great you realize that. But for some reason in social media, it feels like you're all playing a game and you're competing for the same resource and they just got it. And now you're not going to have it. Yeah. But it's not true at all. Like when you live your life, you're like, oh, I can just live my life, do comedy yeah. and keep getting better. And if that's not enough, you should probably quit. I mean, I'm sure you get, not you, but like people get validation from getting followers and stuff. Yeah. But truthfully, it's like, if you're not really enjoying the day to day, which I really do like writing new jokes and getting up and getting better, then it's hard to see like what you want from this life. Do you want like a, the number higher? Cause you could do that for like, you could do that with your ass hanging. Like you could do like, <laughs> right. you could be an influencer too, or like do fashion. Yeah, I think you've and you've probably seen that it doesn't give you what you want. You know, you've had the your cup filled and you've hit whatever number that people probably would assume. Oh, if I hit that number, I'd be like content. And you're like, it's the same thing. I don't. Well, feel... it's al it's also kind of different for me. I never was pursuing it much at all. Yeah, that is true. You didn't seem to be posting for that at all. No, there, there's people that did are posting for that, and I think I don't know if they're successful or not. But even from the beginning. I mean, this is why I, I didn't post for like two years when people were like, yeah, just post your stuff online. What's the harm? Because I was like, well, because it's social media. Like, that doesn't matter. I want to get better at comedy. That doesn't get you better at comedy. And it doesn't. Right. But because I was never pursuing it as a goal, when I got it, I still was like, yeah, I knew it wouldn't matter. Because yeah. I, I didn't think it mattered from the beginning. That's good. You never had a worth put on it, like no. a self-worth thing. That's almost yeah. trickier, though, because I kind of feel the same thing, the same way where it's like, I don't really care. The external validation to me doesn't really, obviously, that I mean, like numbers and stuff, not like the response in the room yeah. of like laughter. Yeah. But numbers and whatever, you go, yeah, of, of like if I do this well, of course that's going to come. But it's more like, oh, it's tricky because the only way I get validation or self-worth or, you know, uh, purpose or fulfillment is when I feel internally like I like my work. And that's the thing that's the hardest to do Yeah, exactly. is to like have a new joke that you like love that you're like, this is how I feel. Yeah. And it's in my voice and all these things. Yeah. That's so much harder to, those are so much rarer mm. than, Oh, this blew up or got viral. And it's know? even just hard to convey that yeah. on a social media joke. Totally. They're so short. Like you, sometimes it's like you need to add cuts for people to like even just pay attention to it. And it's like the, the really nuanced, like smart you jokes don't work for a 45 second clip. Yeah. And they bomb. That's the other hilarious yeah, thing. Yeah. The thing that you're the most proud of eats no, shit no on views, social media. Yeah. <laughs> on social media, yeah, yeah. Oh, people hate yeah. it. Not not in the room, but yeah, definitely on social media. Well, I don't know. There, there's like a there's an element to which the I don't know is social media like corrupting it. Uh, there's there's so many things like Tucker Carlson's like comedy's dying, and I'm like not really like you can kind of still say stuff. There's still like offensive comedians, and it's really not on the day to day. It's just not that big of a deal. Yeah. Like PC culture doesn't have much of an effect on me when I'm going on stage to talk about whatever I'm talking about. Yeah. But like there is an extent to which like comedy is dying because of the way that it's processed by people is it's impossible to create what, what you could have created previously. Like Richard Pryor live on the sunset strip can't really happen now. Because what of that would go viral? I yeah. guess maybe the police brutality one. <laughs> That's such a funny way to look at old art. Like yeah. a Da Vinci painting. What and if go, it would go would viral? Would, it, would this have gone how, viral? How many, view, how many likes would that if, have gotten? Yeah. <laughs> the Mona Lisa would never have been a fucking good reel. The Mona Lisa it's would like, have been a shit reel. It's a time lapse of him painting on his back. I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 40-hour time lapse of him doing the whole Vatican. <laughs> 12 likes him at the end. So that was my Vatican. <laughs> yeah, um, totally. Cause all the best artists were the ones that actually didn't get any notoriety until after they died. They were the guys that cut their ear off cause they're like, no yeah. one gets me, yeah, yeah, you know, ex exactly. And then he would, he would completely do a left turn and he'd like do a mural or just like graffiti, a guy like pissing like into a front door. Yeah. Just, wow. Yeah, 8 yeah, yeah. million views. The Calvin guy yeah. or whatever. That's, brilliant. Exactly, yeah. That's fucking brilliant. Man. Yeah. 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 That's so good. Yeah. We could never have a Unabomber nowadays. You know, no. it's just, everyone has a little community and gets <laughs> seen. It's a bummer. We have no real isolation anymore. It's so annoying. I, I don't. How do you it, even write a manifesto nowadays? You know, literally what is there to manifesto about? It's so <laughs> fucked up. I don't want to live in a world where, I can't manifesto about something. It's super annoying because, like, when I was a kid, I'm like, manifestos are awesome. And, like, now they're, like, so gauche. Like, it's, like, chuggy. 
Yeah. Now like, people will like manifestos agree with are you. so chuggy. I don't even know what chuggy means, but I do like that. <laughs> it's like a new gen. It's like gen- basic kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like basic. Manifestos really are basic now. They are. They are basic. And everyone's got one. Yeah. So. Uh, everyone's got one. It, to commit a mass shooting with a manifesto, it's like, um, hello. What are we in the nineties? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hack. What a fucking hack, Jesus bro. Jesus Christ. <laughs> be like, be, get, be, become like a social media influencer and then do it. That's a 2023 mass. That's shooting. a twist. That's is a, as a girl with a huge ass walking into it. High school <laughs> going, everything's going great for me. <laughs> <laughs> Too many people want to fuck me. Ugh, why do I still feel bad? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the opposite feeling. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> So who wants to that was transition out of that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on. There's one to say the way to, like, we all went, okay, all right. what is next? Hot yeah. girl, Where do we go shooting. from there? Yeah. Well, we got a little into comedy, to be honest. Why yeah, did we, you start when you were in, did you always want to do it? No, I didn't really know it was a thing, I guess. I never really watched stand up either i think i saw like one one stand-up show or something one or two i'm imagining as a kid you were kind of like basketball maybe like sneakers yeah. skateboarding kind of fashiony you had a friend group it was pretty cool Did, you probably weren't into drugs too much uh-uh we were pretty we were pretty clean i didn't smoke little weed known until, fact uh, a meal is Muslim. No. Yeah. People <laughs> commonly think people assume people really. Assume yeah. We talked about that one time yeah. when someone was like, you want to drink? And I was like, Oh, I don't drink. And they were like, Oh my, oh, of course. Sorry. And I was like, <laughs> of course. Hold on. What do you mean? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Why? <laughs> just people assume that I'm Muslim, but yeah, I'm, I, I grew up Catholic. But I it's know. just so funny that they, they also, they can't even fathom. Yeah. Cause they don't, no one knows the middle East that much that they nope. know that there's other religions that exist. Well, so before you tell I them. had Lebanese friends, I didn't really know that was a thing that there were like Christians and yeah. Catholics in, uh, yeah. In if you tell middle people East. you're like, Oh yeah, I grew up like Christian. They're like, I thought you're Arab and you're like, I am. And they're like, but you're, are you like Greek? We don't get it. You know, they're like, what? Yeah. They think it's like a separate thing. Where are you from? <laughs> yeah. 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 Where are you from, from though? You know? But Scotland, they can't, if you're not white, they can't get it. Yeah. Are you Italian? <laughs> like Sweden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, no, oh, I didn't. Spain. You're from Spain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which one of the countries that we're kind of afraid of are you? <laughs> I just know the food's a little spicy for me. Morocco? Yeah. They're India? white in Morocco. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's huh? so funny. <laughs> They're white Muslims in Morocco. Um, I don't think so. You have red in your beard. It doesn't you add up. Irish? <laughs> um. No, yeah, we were, it was suburbs. We weren't that, you know, I didn't smoke weed until I was in college. Wow. And I didn't really? drink until, I still don't really drink in Chica- ever. the Chicago suburbs? Uh, the Chicago suburbs, yeah. What Fuck. are your weekends? But there were kids that were crazy. Like, yeah. my friends all drank and smoked, but I was just like a pretty straight arrow for a while. Okay. And I still am. I just like smoke weed. That's it. So yeah. what were your like middle school, high school weekends consisting of? Like, Wait, are your parents still together? Game? My parents are still together, yeah. Okay. Okay. My parents are, they were very protective, like very scared of the world, I think, of us being kids. So like, you know, drinking, all that stuff, like all the regular high school stuff, they were very oh, against. Oh yeah. You, you told me, you told me one time, like you couldn't have sleepovers or something? I couldn't have, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. There's a bunch of stuff. Really? I didn't sleep over at a friend's house until, uh, until the day, like the week I graduated high school. And by that time it was gay. By that time it was gay. Just yeah. drive home <laughs> drunk, pussy. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why my parents were hey, doing. Guys, could, could I stay over? Yeah. Were you going to sleep with your bros? <laughs> they really had a crazy mind. They were like, why do you need to do that? And I was like, just to fucking be, have, fun. have fun. Yeah. And they were like, there's no reason. They Damn. were like, nothing good happens after midnight. So it, they just I, had all this weird I shit. I assume that the question Tyler was going to ask is a no then. What was the, the question? What? The, 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 like on weekends, were you like video games or like, so, like, what were you guys doing? So up until I got a little easier a child because my sisters got in trouble when they were my, I have two older sisters. So they got in trouble for like drinking what and were smoking they? weed okay. at a concert. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And my mom fucking, my mom Freaked. drug tested my sister. A mo- classic Muslim mom. Classic Muslim yeah. mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest part is that it's my white mom. It's my, the white side. My mom's white. So it is like, it's I don't pe- believe that people hear that though. And they go, Oh, that's probably a foreign immigrant parent thing. But it's like white moms are, have kind of the same amount of some maybe do. I don't know. I feel like white moms are as helicoptery as, cons- as, uh, immigrant yeah, suburban parents. White yeah, moms, suburban white right? moms. I definitely moms. feel that about. Yeah. yeah. I kind of anyway, joke your about Muslim mom was my mom. My, my, my Muslim mom was fucking <laughs> my totally <laughs> my mom. My mom, yeah, my mom was very halal. She was like, <laughs> no, po- I, we, we couldn't eat pork either. Uh, 
Yeah, so dude. She was like cracked down on them, and then you you also bore the brunt of that. I mistake. was I got a I got some well, some tidal waves yeah. from that, but I also then a couple you know after that heat kind of died down. My parents were just getting older, and my they, my sisters my sisters kind of beat them down a little bit. Mm. So I got away, and I was the only boy, so I got a way easier childhood uh, in high school. So I could go by towards okay. the end of high school, yeah. I could go out. Yeah. But it was very, it was like, you have to be home by 11 or by, you'd be home by 10. Ooh. So I was the kid that would kind of come. I would drive everyone. I'd kind of show up. Hi, 30 minutes later. Bye, I'm leaving. Yeah, I remember that. Drive a couple people home. Damn. Yeah, I was like the, I was the DD for were most of it. Were you upset? Like w- w- in high school, I would, if that were me, I would have been so fucking annoyed. Yeah, Did, I don't think I, I think by that time I had so little freedom. I would have gone, mom, seriously, I need to do more Oxycontin. Let me stay. <laughs> yeah. So like your Mondays <laughs> at school was just like, so how'd the party end up? <laughs> yeah. it was, What happened? Oh, totally. I had so much FOMO <sighs> in, in that, in high school and stuff, just because I was like, you know, I got such a small window <sighs> into it. I Dude, was I was in the cool be group, there. but I was you, so, so barely were. a part of it. So the way that I'm picturing your life going, and I need you to correct me, is yeah. like this kind of person that you're painting and as soon as you go to college goes crazy and starts partying a lot because it's you're allowed you have your freedom now for the first time yeah i think that's why i went away for school too because i was my sister stayed close by in oh. state and i was like i'm um, out yeah i yeah. couldn't wait exactly. because i was like i just need to be a person mm-hmm. and i also i wasn't cutting loose in a crazy way i was like i just i knew what was a good amount for me and you i was already started having sleepovers yeah 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 <laughs> with my boys they thought it was in weird college can i sleep in your dorm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you live two doors down doesn't, i don't know it'd be fun doesn't it suck when there's only two people in your dorm <laughs> let's get eight or nine in here come on <laughs> Who wants you to sleep, on the, sleep on the rug? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Twin beds are pretty spacious. Let's get three or four more dudes in here. Come on, guys. Yeah, literally. But so yeah, I went. I went to college then, and then I I, I drank and partied a little bit for a year, maybe, and then yeah. I was like, this isn't. You know, I was also so late to it that it didn't even interest me. You know, really? Yeah. Hmm. I just didn't, you know, I didn't react good to alcohol. Like, I didn't have fun drinking. Were you like, this is just boring, or what? What did you? Yeah, I think yeah. I was just like, I would just like look around, and I would be like. I think actually I remember I was at a concert one time. I went to Lollapalooza with friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was maybe, I think, the summer after freshman year of high school. And we all, like, the whole thing in the Chicago suburbs was you would, like, pregame on the train on the way down. Totally. And get, like, so we, blackout drunk. Like, hammered. That's so it was, a, like, yeah. it would be, like, 8 or 9 a.m. And yeah. you'd be on the train with, like, people in suits and briefcases commuting ah. to work. <laughs> and there'd be, like, like children with, like, water bottles of, like, yeah. fireball and, like, sunscreen bottles. Just fucking idiots. I love how we thought it was, like, like super not suspicious. Totally. We're drinking what looks like piss. Yeah. And yeah, getting yeah. drunker as we do. <laughs> or, like, they can't tell. And it's in a Poland spring bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The children slurring. Somehow we thought we were buttoned up and really, like, faking it well. So I remember we were, like, we would do that. We'd pregame or whatever. Yeah. And I remember I was doing that. That life, I was trying that out. I was like, this is what I want. I was fucking wearing basketball jerseys and you know, we would order basketball yes. jerseys from China. Did you yep. guys have yes. this phase? Yes. Big time. From yeah. AliExpress yes. or whatever. Yeah. Yep. You'd be like, sure. I remember I had, a, I had a Russell Westbrook jersey from the Supersonics that just oh, never shit. existed. It yeah. was just never a thing. Oh, just never, I was going to say. The franchise like had, two years yeah, it had already changed. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember I had and I was like, this is my fucking, I remember every time I wore dudes would be like, dude, it would, it was like incredible. <laughs> it was like, that was my, that was my whole identity. Yeah. And so, I remember we went down and I was like a little drunk or whatever. And I was like, this is so fun. And then I remember I sobered up in oh. the concert oh, oh, and I was no. in a, I, I was like yeah. just touched on all sides yeah. by sweaty drunk people. And I was like sober and I was just like, this is hell. Yeah. This I remember like tough. in that moment, I was like, this is not, this sucks. That's it's, it's, it's that's why you get fucked up when you go to concerts. Cause yeah. you go, this really isn't that good. Totally. Like, it's, it's too, it, you're in the mosh pit. You're too many people are touching you yeah. and it smells bad. Yeah. And it's like gross and dirty. It's like the worst parts of like adult life is like waiting in lines. And like, you're just like, it's like being on like the subway platform and like being like, this (laughs) is sick. (laughs) It's bananas that you trick yourself into thinking. Especially when you're like, you're sober and people around you are fucked up. It's in those moments. You're like, I either need to be dead sober for the rest of my life or become an alcoholic. I mean, yeah, because there's nothing less interesting than a drunk person talking or yeah. any, I mean, when just interacting sober, with, oh a, with a drunk or fucked up person when you're sober is like, oh I'll my blow my brains out God. right now. I'll, I'll start an addiction just to cope with this <laughs> 10 minute conversation. <laughs> Especially in high school too, because you're, you're so fucked up. Like when your friends are drunk, they're like actually toddlers. Like they go, they revert that far. Totally. I think when I get drunk now, I revert to like, 
when I get really drunk, I revert to like 16 year old me. Yeah. But that when I was 16, I would revert to like a five year old. Right. You always go 10 and years. And it's not back. funny. You're just, it's so annoying. Yeah. You I can't literally walk, yeah. you throw yeah. up, people yeah, take poop care. your pants. And everyone is I used to <laughs> <laughs> I used to legit piss myself in college. I, I would drink like like a lot. I wouldn't black out ever. I never got to that point, but I would drink like, you know, we would do like nine or ten beers a night yeah. in college. And then I'd just piss myself. Like a <laughs> like lot. sitting down yeah. or like at, when Wherever. you're sleeping? Wherever. Oh, okay. How many That's times do you think you yeah, pissed yourself? Sitting your pants. down, I pissed yeah. myself. I pissed myself on our couch like three times. Wow. Just and they were like, like in conversation. They were like, dude, stop. <laughs> Your friends were like, this yeah. is an ordeal yeah. now. Dude, what the fuck? Dude, you can't be this guy. <laughs> Please. How many times do you think you did it before you were like, did you ever get to a point where you'd wake up with piss soaked jeans and go, ah, this sucks? Or were you always like, ah, it's like name of the game. That's I, what would, happens. I would always like piss myself. And then I was always like a responsible drunk. So I had to piss myself and then like shower. Right. And like, it, like I, I remember a couple times you did the dishes to I, try to counter it. I remember. A, <laughs> I cleaned the toilet bowl with the bleach thing that goes around. So that's actually counter counters that. I remember this. I'd piss myself and it wouldn't get on my shirt. So I'd take my shirt off and then I'd shower in the jeans that I had pissed in wow. to like get the piss off. And then I would get in my pajamas. Oh. And sometimes this is rare, but like a, one or two times I like went back down and kept partying in my PJs. That's how good. But Oxycontin usually I would is. just go back to sleep in my, in my pajamas. No, this is college. I, wow. I wasn't really doing much Oxy. Okay, I did it, it a was couple, just drinking. I did it a little bit in college, but it, it was mostly in high school. I did Oxy. Oh, okay. In college I, it was I was acid. just drinking. So it was early. Didn't you, you had an injury, right? Yeah, I was like 16. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That's so actually 16 to when I was like 18, 19. Like eighteen and a half, I'd say. Okay, so you got addicted from the years. from after the surgery. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. They give you, they used to give you a lot. Yeah, they did. They did. They, I got my you, wisdom teeth out, and yeah. my mom flushed my pain meds because my mom she should have done that. Yeah. See, it's interesting because you have both. You know, my with my mom, I went. That's too much. That's overkill. I need. I was in pain, and I was like, "Are yeah. you fucking kidding me? I just yeah, had I surgery need, today." Exactly. I think. And that's, then the, the other flip side is. She maybe there's some validity. Maybe your kid does get addicted to, uh, to yeah. opioids. Yeah, no, there's totally validity to that, especially at that time. I mean, the craziest thing I remember he when he gave it to me, and my mom was in the room. Like she should have heard this and been like, "Whoa!" Yeah, he gave it to me. A huge, <laughs> he winked. Like it was he looked literally at you and winked. And you're, mom, what the hell? <laughs> He, was he like, wrote his, which, are he you wrote his phone. Me? Yeah, he gave me a cell number. <laughs> and hey, he told me if I was fifteen per years, milligram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He what? said if I was fifteen years younger, I'd have a really fun time with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd sell these to some friends. And I what? Aren't you sixty five? Yeah. <laughs> Dollar a milligram. <laughs> what? This is the black market, right? <laughs> so you know, anyway. if you crush them up and snort them, it's unbelievable. Yeah. High. <laughs> It's it's quicker if you snort them. The yeah. doctor saying this in front of my mom. My mom on her phone. If you jerk off, <laughs> look at this. It'll be the best feeling you've ever had in your life. <laughs> You'll never come harder in your whole life. You won't be able hell? to come with a woman after this. <laughs> so, I, so I, he gave me this bottle, and it was like, I mean, you know, it's a memory, so it's entirely possible this isn't totally correct. All I know is there's a full bottle in my memory. It's a bottle like the size of like a water bottle right just of oxycotton huge. like i all i know was it was way bigger than a normal prescription pill bottle right i know that right. for sure and he it goes was a tall boy he goes it was <laughs> <laughs> it's a 40 that's what he called it he, uh, he went he went tape this to your hands oh my god dude that's so finish funny. it <laughs> that's so good <laughs> that's okay, edward 40 hands with, <laughs> with oxys <laughs> And he's like, I'll do it with you. I'll do it with you. But you forget to take the cap. <laughs> you forget to take the medicine cap off. You have to pinch it. So you're just fuck, like, fuck, trying squeeze to and twist. Mom, mom, mom could, could you, you take help these me? off? We're yeah, trying to do yeah, something yeah. here. <laughs> he's like, okay, honey. Okay. So he handed it to me like this huge bottle. And he said, so this is enough for six months, but you're only going to take them for two weeks. Oh, my what God. The he said fuck. that to me. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay. And I knew my friends did them recreationally. Oh, so it was already because a my friend house. before I got surgery had texted me. He's like, "Yo, if you get blues, like hit me up." Wow, you called so them blues I knew it already was recreational too. Already, right? And and it was it was crazy. I, I got home and the <laughs> he was the first friend to visit me, obviously. But he, like two days later, he came and I sold him like five of them. Yeah, for immediately. Like a, a dollar you, a milligram. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, a dollar that seems pretty cheap. Yeah. A, what's a milligram? No, a dollar pill? a milligram is that's pretty normal. How many is it? How many milligrams is it? One pill. 
Those ones were 25. Oh, so a pill was, you're getting 30 bucks, 30 yeah. bucks for a pill. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wow. just depends on the pill because some of them are like, if you get like a Percocet, it's like five milligrams. Yeah. So you just, that's five bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But usually it's a 10 milligram. I got a surgery on my knee. It was kind of a major surgery-ish, yeah. like borderline. So they gave me 25s. And then I got wisdom tooth surgery, which is way more painful because it's in your head. Sure. This is like, this is like within a month of each other. And so the, well, no, like two months. And so you I still the had the doctor. oxys from before, but I was running out because I was doing them a lot. Yeah. You know, like taking like so many, I got addicted when I was recovering because it would be so painful. You take some and it would abate a little bit, but you're like, I need more. And so sure. you take more and then you just get addicted. Right. So I hadn't run out yet. Like two months later, when it was like school had started. This was in the summer. This was like probably July. This is what year of school? Maybe August. I think I got the surgery in August before uh, senior year of high school. Okay. Um, before senior year. August. Of, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it was that summer because you missed the recruiting season. Yes, for, I missed the yeah. recruiting season. So then I was 17. Oh, so 16. you guys were good at baseball. You guys were like going to play. I wanted to. In college. I he played in college. college. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. And nice. Jamie was better than I was, but he, but fucked he up threw his, his he threw yeah. his life away with Oxy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Dude, weirdly, <laughs> baseball is worse than doing Oxy. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's more damaging to your mental psyche, probably. <laughs> I, uh, I So anyway, it was like two months in between the first surgery and the second one. So I was running out of the original oxy and then i got wisdom tooth surgery and they gave me 35 milligrams of of oxycontin pure oxycontin was not prescribed anymore it was like 2014 like they yeah, they're new they're giving you like quaaludes yeah, yeah it's like, maybe it was 2013 but they the same, do same doctor no totally different because it's like an orthodont it's like this a totally is, this is already crawling out and yeah mom's like okay you can drive you have your license yeah, yeah, yeah you're doing the wolf of wall street <laughs> thing the slurring <laughs> This is like the what you hear about in those documentaries about like the opioid like crisis yeah. of doctors getting paid so much to to prescribe. It was kickbacks. I'm sure that's why. Wow, they were getting money to prescribe them to me, and uh, and so I got the wisdom tooth ones, and and he and that guy was actually like, these are really powerful. Like, don't give them them to him for more than like two days. Yeah, like to th my dad, and yeah. then they just I just kept yeah. the bottle. Wow. So your parents had more of like a laissez faire, like they just they just trusted you guys to to look after yourselves. In yeah, because they were situation? they were divorced, and okay, it was it's harder to parent when there's just it's just you. Sure, you're yeah. not really communicating with the other person. So right. when you're away from your kids, you just don't think about it's, them as much. It's actually right. funny. It was the exact opposite of your experience. Because literally every single Friday, Saturday, yeah. I would spend some, at true. someone else's house. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Every, every night. For like every three night. years. Yeah. From like sophomore year till the end of high school. Yeah. Wow. And what I would do is I would tell my parents I was at one house. Like tell my mom I was at my dad's, dad I was at my mom's, and then just go wherever. Wow! So that that you benefit from them not having a good talking terms relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't he even did. check to make yeah. sure nope. they wouldn't. He wow. is coming to your house. You try right? to talk yeah. shit about them to each other so that they don't even text anymore. And I don't I'd know, figure that really... out because I would tell my mom sometimes like I'm I'm going to dad's. Like for real, I would actually be going to yeah. his house, and then she would ask when I came back. She's like, "Where were you?" And I'm like, "She's not asking him. She's not putting it together even when I leave and I say where I'm going." Yeah. So I was, I would just every time, right? Could lie every time. Yeah, you're like, I'm not. You For just me, don't do this yeah. To me. Even when I went to my dad's, I, you would just lie. I, <laughs> I met a friend. Right. <laughs> you just got off on it. You just needed the rush still. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'm doing drugs. You're just at your dad's house. <laughs> Video games. I was, yeah, you got addicted to lying to your mother also. <laughs> Once I got uh, a better high than oxy, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Is deceiving your parents. Oh man, does that feel good? What a, what a rush! You start selling that at school. Yo, yo, send this text. You'll get such a rush from it. Send this. Text. That's so funny. Five dollars a word. Five dollars a word. So you, you were were you the crazier sibling, and then you were the more, or I don't know. You guys both went out and partied. Uh, I mean, he was definitely. I mean, doing I don't think you were addicted shit. to drugs. Yeah. No, but. not really. No, not at all. Um, I mean, it seems like you got it under control quickly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you had you just you you let loose a little bit more than he did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like a year, probably. Is this because you had? Do you think it's because you had baseball still? on your mind, and then you got injured, and you were like, well, he was also. I was 100%. in college when he even when this happened to him. So I was like already gone. So you, that's injury. totally what it was. And here's why I, I'm trying to get recruited in that season. Yeah. I, I hurt my knee the end of our spring baseball season. So in like March, April. Yeah. And I didn't realize what it was, but my knee was hurting me the whole time I was playing baseball. So I, I legitimately, I tore my meniscus in like nine places. It flipped over. So it was like, it was like knee on knee for a long time when I was playing. 
And I, it got to the point where my knee locked up. I couldn't run anymore, but I'm trying to get recruited. So I'm still playing. And I went to a doctor. They were like, it's just sprained. You'll be fine. Yeah. I rested and here's it totally moxie. wasn't fine. I was like, this is a bad sprain. I had no, here's some, yeah. <laughs> here's, here's some moxie for the road. Wait, it just came in for a sore throat. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> this is a routine checkup. You, yeah. You'll need some moxie. Here's some moxie. Wait, they have a thing at the front desk. It's not lollipops. <laughs> The one, wait, did you forget your oxy? Don't, don't forget your oxy. <laughs> it's 2008. Take your oxy. Please, it's free. It's like those condoms that they have, the shitty condoms in, in health, whatever the health center. <laughs> oh my God. So that, that changed your life, that injury. Because up until then, I'm assuming you were like, baseball is my life. It's kind of the same yeah. thing where it's like at that time in your life, sports was the, was the only outlet you had yes was the the main thing in your life exactly and the issue was like i was good in high school but really you prove on the recruiting trail in the summer yeah that you can play in college because those are all kids that are going to play in college okay and i was like good in high school but i needed to prove myself in the summer after high school after uh junior year yeah to get recruited and i was fully couldn't run like totally horrible every time i swung i would like move Cause like I couldn't like you couldn't finish a swing. I can't like demonstrate it, but like my knee was hurting, so I would like go like every wow. time I couldn't swing the bat yeah correctly because of my knee. So I would uh, so anyway I was horrible. I think I got like one hit out of like thirty at bats in the in the at the showcase in the yeah, showcase recru- recruiting yeah. Showcase. Oh, yeah. Shit. And so I was like god awful. I couldn't move at second base, so I looked like a terrible. I just looked like the worst baseball player you've ever. Were seen. Were you limping though? Do you think they were, they thought you were injured? I was. Did you? I try couldn't to... run. Okay, so it was clear that <laughs> it was so obvious. You almost looked like that was part. Of, like they're like you have like a limp, and they're like, how did he get? Wow, here? this disabled kid's really good. <laughs> they were probably like <laughs> they're kind of impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, I bet for someone in... with a disability. I mean, we're not going to recruit him, but that's impressive. Yeah. I bet that that it's part of what was happening. They're like, this kid loves baseball. <laughs> totally. <laughs> this kid just he just wants to be out here. You got a lot of pads on your yeah. back afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. For my, I, I really. Why did. did all the scouts let me take a picture with them? <laughs> I didn't get any of their emails, but they took all. They all took pictures with me. <laughs> they all signed <laughs> stuff for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They signed my hat like I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's like what was going on and I was trying to get recruited obviously no one was recruiting me so I had this r- weird crisis especially when I got the surgery as <laughs> a major surgery they were like it's gonna take six to eight months for it to wait sorry so 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 recover. you showcased you didn't know that you needed surgery and then afterwards you found out and then halfway through the summer season I couldn't like stand on my wow. leg so he went in and this is the craziest thing how inept doctors are I don't understand how this happened I vividly remember it. We went in for the MRI for my knee when I couldn't put weight on it. I like my mom helped me in. I was I was like like resting all my weight on her on her shoulders. Yeah. We went in. We got an MRI. He like tested the mobility. I couldn't move it. And then he looked at the MRI and he went, "You're fine. It's just a sprain. You'll be okay." This is the second time he said this. Same and guy. Then, and then we get in the parking lot and they call us back and they go, "Hey, you're gonna have to come back in." And then a different guy goes, "It's it's." it's like torn in nine places and it flipped over. So we're going to need to unflip it and then remove part of it. Cause there's so many tears, the polar opposite of it's just a sprain. Yeah. They're like, we just saw the <laughs> wrong so chart. Weird. It's like when they give you like the wrong baby or whatever. Like we totally, that's on us. Oh, this is a black knee. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. know why we thought that was you. That's <laughs> a sorry, that was room four C. <laughs> that's our bad Four a. Yeah. You need surgery. Yeah. 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 You hear another guy go, Oh my God, it's just a spray. Yeah. It's on the hall. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, that poor bastard that got my, Holy that, fuck. got that other diagnosis. I, I so I don't ear, need oxygen. No, you do. Yeah. I, wait. So I came in like the really bad ear infection. Yeah, I think it's just a sprain. You'll be yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> He's just walking around with the headphones in. He doesn't hear anyone. <laughs> but I don't. Just a sprain. And grab this, some oxy. Just a sprain. And grab some oxy. <laughs> to this day, I'm this like. guy's got money ha- hanging out of all his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Every suit. time he says some oxy for you, some guy puts money in his yeah, pocket. Yeah, yeah. Why are you? <laughs> There's a guy holding. Is that a Purdue Pharma hat on? Is that a Purdue rep? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How is no one seeing this up until now? It it's does crazy. kind of sound like this guy was so inept that he was just a guy playing a doctor. Like he found a coat and he was like, I don't want to. <laughs> I want to cosplay as a doctor. So he walks in. He just pretends to look at a chart. Oh uh, yeah, I think yeah. I, I think I got a. You got the catch here. me if you can, Frank Abbott male <laughs> yeah, doctor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got the one that photoshopped his. Why degree. are you Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah. <laughs> It's it just was a sprain. <laughs> insane, dude. And he did the surgery. He did it well. But anyway, after that, after the surgery, I'm like, I can't play college baseball. That's just out. Right. Like, I knew that. Because I was trying to go D3 to schools that were academically too 
too good for me to get in right on academics so yeah. i was like trying to get in as a baseball player yeah. and i was like that can't happen anymore so i was i just started doing a lot of drugs right you I, were like depressed I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I that do was remember, the worst period of my life. That month of August is literally the worst period. I do remember Jamie, like, as he was going through the application process, he still wanted to play, but obviously he hadn't been recruited, which is what helps you get in. Yeah. And I remember, like, every single coach was like, yeah, if you get in on your own, like, you could walk on. And yeah. Jamie like, was like, yeah, okay, all of well, it. Yeah. yeah. They were like, like, do it on Williams your own. College. I'm yeah. like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, you couldn't <laughs> get throw in me a little help. Own. Yeah. Totally. I went to talk to the coach at, like, Amherst. And he was like, yeah, I think he could definitely play like second base for us, maybe transition to shortstop in junior year. And I was like, awesome. I, I really appreciate that. Like, are you going to write to the, the admissions office? He's like, no, but you could definitely <laughs> play. See, I guess that's where sports <laughs> kind of come in Thanks, is like, man. that is, those are valuable lessons in life. You do kind of learn how to deal with the bullshit of that. It's yeah. the same with comedy now. It's like how many Get times, addicted to Oxy. It's like a booker. Yeah, totally. Getting addicted to Oxy. But it's like, it's like, <laughs> the, to deal it's it. like the bullshit bookers <laughs> that are like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, can I get a spot? And they're like, yeah, can you message the yeah. thing? You're like, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's crazy that, that that exists in every field. I didn't put it together at the time, though. You yeah. don't put that together until later, and you go, oh, he didn't mean... Totally. For a while, you just go, that adult was really mean. You yeah. just have a vengeance for like some guy named <laughs> Mr. Moore. 100%. <laughs> 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 You're Fuck like, Mr. why do I Moore. hate the name Jeff so much? <laughs> <laughs> oh, why do I like... root against the Amherst College baseball? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Super specific. <laughs> I look them up just to see if they lost. It's a little weird that I still do that. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, then when you ended baseball, because there is like a death of your personality when you end your sports career as a kid, I feel like. And there's no. a, there's a re, <laughs> I know who I was. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. There's there, you have to really like reframe your whole view on life. Cause you go, okay, I'm done with this th game. Yeah. Now, what am I going to do? What's my identity now? Well, I had the, this like weird kind of, internal struggle of like i didn't like fit in that well on the team you really flipped the therapy on us this, yeah i was yeah, sorry yeah. That's no it's good but i like they had this internal thing of like i don't really fit in you know like with the super jockey bro -y, like yo let's go fuck tonight like let's right. get hammered um and people like thought <laughs> you it was have a, weird. you have a good joke about that yeah thank you um and uh just move on don't address what's it. no but you yeah. can't really because yeah. it's yeah. your material but yeah, yeah, he yeah. has a good joke about that um but essentially it's like, so good yeah. it's so good yeah oh, fuck. it's actually really funny like it's actually the, it would be the peak of the yeah. podcast if we yeah, yeah. If, if we, we, we said it, it would bury the be, rest yeah. of it <laughs> <laughs> it would ruin the rest it's of it it's on patreon yeah we'll say we'll cut now cut back in cut back in okay yeah um, <laughs> we just did the joke for everyone that's at home. Uh, go follow, subscribe, like, and uh, you'll see it. Uh, but even like, I it's really wanted it. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, can we say the joke yeah. and then cut it? <laughs> Let's just. No, uh, we don't want to no, do no, that. No, we don't. That, we don't want to ruin. We don't want to ruin this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Because right, right. I don't think we'll be able to continue. Seriously, Emil, we're that. not going to fucking yeah. do that. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I just don't think we'd be able to like have momentum yeah yeah you'd just be gone you know okay, it's fair. an unfollowable <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i get it totally it's an unfollowable podcast quip you yeah, know? yeah totally fair um but no i had this weird thing <laughs> it's really funny by the way yeah. <laughs> god damn it <laughs> no because i really Think really Louis wanted CK. <laughs> <laughs> it'll ruin your life <laughs> it'll ruin your fucking life <laughs> yeah it'll it's it, it's like that anyway <laughs> so i really wanted to play college baseball <laughs> And, uh, it, but it was because like, I loved the sport and we went to a pretty nerdy school where yeah. no one was like the jockey. -like. You were the jock at the school, at our school. Our right. High and school. I'm not like that at all. Like you I wasn't like shitting on like, no, no, I'm not at all. But no, but you sense. were. In yeah, the, I guess. Setting. Yeah. Um, so then I went to this, this D3 school where like everyone was like that of like, yo, like, like where are we getting fucked up tonight? My teammates literally thought it was weird that like I joined clubs in college. They thought it was like, gay. yeah, they were like, that's yeah. crazy. Like I'd be, I'd like get lunch with like the Asian international, like Chinese student. And they'd be like, what the fuck were you doing with her? Oh my God. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. It's like an American pie movie. Yeah. Those are your friends. Yeah. Are um, you trying to fuck her? No, I was just talking yeah, about that person. No, we, <laughs> what? We were talking about the club that She's we're in like together. my friend. What? what? Yeah. Wait. Ew. Wait. But how? <laughs> friends with her? Where'd you Man. go to? Where'd like you with go to benefits? Is, Dickinson College, okay. small D three, middle of Pennsylvania. Yeah, you, that's, that is college, man. You forget. I mean, we're adults it's now, college. but that was like every that was every college vibe. It was kind of and the high school too. 
a yeah. couple years ago. It was kind of that like, I mean, what, are you doing? That's, what are you doing feeling feelings? That's fucking yeah. weird. But it was also, I thought you were our fuck, dude. I thought you were our friend, dude. What are you doing joining drama club? That's like a whole plot of a Disney I movie. Were, <laughs> Wait, I thought you were our friend. I can't believe you're in the school musical. But by the end of the movie, I actually realized I want to be in drama club. Yeah. yeah. The whole football and team they joined. Yeah. joined too. They're in the, they're in the ensemble. It ends with the musical uh, dance of them all yeah. joining it. <laughs> Yeah. So I like had this, I just loved baseball. So I just like wanted to play at as high a level as I could. And, um, also remember thinking like, I don't know if I'm going to be friends with these people after yeah. these four years, like in the, like I remember being a sophomore, just that someone says something really just like horrible. And I'm like, this has it. This has a timestamp on when this is going to, this go, friendship I, yeah. is going to end. You go, yeah. I can't wait to leave the group chat. I had a reputation on the team of, uh, you can't say the N word around Tyler. Because he's oh. going to be a bitch about it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You were a bitch about that? Yeah. <laughs> like, he's he's going to be I'm really, kind of on their side, man. What he's going to be, he's going to be really gay if we say the N word around him. It's so, so funny gay. that the, Tyler's so gay. He's not racist at all. What a yeah, gay yeah, guy. Yeah. He's so that, gay about that it. Saying he's a bitch about it and calling him gay is like the least offensive part <laughs> of that whole deal. Yeah, wow, but the, that's the, so they don't even say the uh, the slur for gay people. They yeah. just call him gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, totally. he won't even say the N-word. He's gay. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't say the F word. What are yeah. you gay? <laughs> this dude is so gay. Wow, that's crazy that you were the you were no it was like almost like it was like a peanut allergy or something. It was just like a red f- people just knew around you, like, oh fucking <laughs> sensitive Nancy over here. Yeah, it was so the team's probably like like 36 people and I was one of like four Democrats and we were like outed as Democrats. That's on the so team. funny Yeah, to be a Democrat in college yeah. and they're just like, like shitting on you. Right. Because <laughs> wait, there like are four Democrats out of the baseball team. It's like maybe a couple more, but where were, were they from Pennsylvania? The people who were Democrats? Yeah. Or not no, no, Democrats? no, no. The, the ones that aren't, why are they all Republicans? Suburbs of Pennsylvania, Connecticut, um, yeah. Virginia. It's so Virginia, funny that they're all having like right. unprotected, unprotected sex and they're all like, you know, Republican pro life. But it's like you, if you're smart as a young person, you should be so liberal. Oh yeah. Everything is in your best interest. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I remember the summer after college, uh, was 2016. Yeah. Th- that's when I graduated. So that summer, like the group chat was like all this like Trump shit. And I was just like, well, yeah. Cause you're is- only conservative as a young person because your parents have money. Or are conservative Damn, also, yeah. you know? Or you're just good old fashioned racist. Or good old fashioned racist, yeah. You that's also okay too. That. That's or true. or you're just not a bitch about the N word. Yeah. yeah or you're <laughs> cool to hang out with. Duh, or, yeah. Or you, chill. or you chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Tyler's fucking lame. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> they bring girls. Were there over. no just, black kids on the team? There were. None of them lasted all four years. What a coincidence. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Baseball also seems pretty white, right? Yes, it is. It, yeah. No. No, it's like mostly. Oh, you're right. It's Latin a lot of. Well, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and a lot of them though. are black. No, not professionally. It's more black than at the lower levels. We actually did. Wow. Yeah, we had one Dominican kid who lasted all four years. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Was he the best player on the team? Um, it was like this weird thing of like he was very good. Yeah. But it's this weird thing of other people are like, yo, fucking Christians, like, like he's he might go pro, like. I'm just like, he he has a big cross and a big <laughs> chain. Just because his jewelry, they were just like, it's just something about him. It's Damn right, his, he rocked that. He had one with like beads swag. and one with uh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's no, so he, funny. He was very talented, but he's he was like also a guy like, from the Bronx. Dude. Yeah. 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 Christian, like, he grew up in the Dominican, yeah. like a baseball academy. <laughs> I, I heard he, like, threw heard, rocks and, like, hit it with, like, <laughs> sticks they found on the ground. I heard him say <laughs> poppy one time. Yeah. He's going to make it. <laughs> this dude's the next guy. He's kind of a bitch about the N-word, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Christian would say the N-word. Yeah, a lot oh, of yeah, Dominicans do yeah. 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 Obviously, as in they do, are are they allowed to say it? Dominicans? And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Us saying if he's allowed or not. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can say whatever. Yeah, <laughs> of course I can yeah, say sure. it. Definitely more no, than me. I, I don't know. I, when, when, here's the thing is if a Dominican guy says it around us, are, is any of us going to go, right. no, you can't? No, not at all. Right. Yeah, I don't so know. What, yeah, what, what you do, at least what I've learned from playing college baseball, is you just say it back to them. Right. <laughs> At least that's what it's everyone pro- else on the team did. It's like, what, say the N word? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like literally throwing the ball back yeah. with the N word. <laughs> that's what, that's, that's, what, what that's we how were, they yeah. viewed it. <laughs> oh, he threw me the N word. Oh, I got to throw it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> You're just there holding it. What do I do with this? Yeah, Guys, I'd, I'd just, just throw it, it my, back, you bitch. I, I just put it We've in my gotten back ourselves into a similar situation as Hot Girl Mass Shooter, which is now we don't know where to pivot from. <laughs> 
Where do we go from this? Throwing the N-word back to your teammate. Well, I just want to throw the N-word back to you, Emil. Let's just (laughs) And just ask you about when you got into college, did you start comedy immediately? Because you went to Bloomington, and there's a famously good uh, comedy club there. Yeah, I started. So did you immediately start going to the mics, or did it take a little bit? I waited like a year. I was a finance major. Fucking pretty Very stable, stable. Pretty cool. Stable. Stable. Yeah. That's just how out of my I had no idea who I was, you know? So I was a, I came in as a finance major. I was like, I'm gonna do banking. I'm gonna do investment banking. What? Yeah. I wanted to fucking be you th- I wanted to be like a Wall Street guy for what? like for like a year, to be honest. Okay. Because of Wolf of Wall Street. You wanted to Wolf of Wall Street. I'm gonna okay. take my sweatshirt off. That was literally probably that came out my freshman year, I think. Okay, wait, pause. Sorry. Wait, it came, so it, it that movie came out freshman year of college or of high school for you? I would imagine it would be high school because you're a little younger than me. Wait, actually, yeah. It, it, I think maybe it came out when I was in high school, but not freshman year of high school. But I remember, really stuck with I remember you. freshman year of college, it was still huge because huge. I, I went to a business school. Yeah. So to those to those people, it was, it was like it was like yeah. that was like God, you yeah. know. A lot of Leonardo DiCaprio references in this. In my lifetime, I'm realizing. Yeah. Um, kind of one. You guys are fusing. I probably yeah. just have a, a little bit of a gay crush on him. Um, Could be. Who doesn't, you know? Uh, probably not many people don't. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Uh, but so, yeah, Wolf Tyler's of Wall Street. got the best bit. About. <laughs> about Leonardo, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's that, why is he allowed to say the N-word? Right. In it's movies. actually in defense of him dating younger girls. It's the only hot take. You know who loves it is Jamie's old coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it funny that the guys that do that are either Leonardo DiCaprio or high school or baseball coach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like normal, well-adjusted guys. Like, eh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Totally. Leo DiCaprio, he's fucked so many women, it comes back around to like, I almost can't. He's kind of a loser again. And my high school teacher is like, I almost could. <laughs> right. <laughs> the baseball coach, I might be able to sleep with him. <laughs> They have the same self worth. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio and the guy, the guy yelling at teenagers. Yeah. Me and Leo actually have a lot in common. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you started immediately, like when you got to college. You're not partying much. I mean, maybe I was partying, you're partying in freshman year. I was partying my freshman year a bunch. Not a bunch, you know, whatever, a, a couple times, whatever. I was partying as much as my friends. Did you were drink every weekend? Uh, yeah, probably yeah, for yeah. probably a year. Yeah, same. And then, yeah, and then I just realized, I, I went back to school my sophomore year, and I was like, I fucking hate this. Like, this is, I hate, I was, I remember being in the library one day, and I was studying, because my freshman year, I got like a 4.0. I got like a, I had a great GPA, and I was like doing really good, because my parents were like, you know, I was always not a good student. Yeah. I was just like lazy. I was just kind of like, you know, not interested. So then I got to college, and I was like, I'm going to fucking buckle down, and I'll show them, you know, I'm going to be an adult now, and I'm going to have fun, you know, I can do both. So I did, I did great. And then I was in a, I was, I was in, in the fraternity. library. I was in a business fraternity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And which is just a hilarious, you know, they were great. They were really cool people, but it was yeah. just such a funny. It's good when there's a fraternity about something. Fraternity, yeah. fraternity without like a business element. They or become like, a drinking. Yeah. Rapey fraternity. Yeah. yeah. Well, we yeah. would party together. Unless there's a reason. It was just, no, like, yeah, it, it was a club. It was a club. More, right. Exactly. Should, That's what the I'm fraternity, saying. The fraternity aspect was such a silly, yeah. dorky yeah. part of it. Yeah. We had like a, like letters and like we, we got sworn in or whatever the fuck. It was like the fraternity aspects just felt culty. Yeah. Cause we didn't have a house. It was by, I almost said by gender, by racial. It's, it was two, uh, it was both genders. Co-ed. Co-ed. Jesus it was Christ. literally just, if you declare the major, you can join. It was the only biracial fraternity was, on campus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it yeah, would have been. It actually IU. probably was. Yeah, honestly. I knew it must have been. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but yeah, so it was just like, there was like, I remember we got like sworn in or whatever. Then there was like candles in the fucking room. It was all the lights were off. We came in blindfolded. And then there was like the, the seniors were in like cloaks. And there was like a handshake, and I was just like, "What are we fucking doing, dude?" It was they like so- rented one of the classrooms. <laughs> yeah, it literally was like a, a lecture. It was hall. in the. It was. I swear to God, it was There's in a lecture people hall. like waiting. Like, are they done in there I was yet? Literally like, we I have, have a reservation in, yeah. for five thirty. I was Someone like, I have math in, in here on Monday. Excuse me. <laughs> Are you guys, how much more do you have? Because we reserved yeah. the room. We're doing Model UN oh, in here in like 30 minutes. Mm, 
dead wait, serious. Seriously, seriously, one sec. You can hear who it is, <laughs> even though they have a hood on. Seriously, one second. We're doing the ritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know all the people. Okay, well, we have it reserved. You have to wrap it up in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. let's cut the bloodletting and let's just go straight to the handshake. <laughs> Welcome, Emil. Yeah, dude, 100%. It literally had that vibe. It was so funny. It was like very like Jeffrey Epstein kind of like, you know, sex Wasn't party. Was that the first semester you were there? That was the second yeah. semester I was there. The yeah. first semester I was there, I I rushed that fraternity. I didn't get in, and it was I was heartbroken. Oh. I was so disappointed. And then I rushed it again, and I got it. And I was like, "This huh. is Double it's so rush. It's again, it's the thing where at the time, it's something that feels like this is the best thing in my. Yeah, I remember at the time, so. I was like, I wanted to. I think I put it in my Instagram bio. I put the letters, and I was so <sighs> proud to put it. Brutal. I was just like, "Oh my god, finally, I have like you know, yeah. like an identity or like a group that yeah. I belong to." Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Anyway, so I did that, and then I did that for a year. I had one active semester in that. I had my pledge semester, one active semester, and then I came back to school sophomore year. And within, I think, the first three weeks, I was like, I, I think I hate everything I'm doing. Yeah. Like, I think none of this is for me. And so I mm. I stayed in my major and I stayed kind of around the same business school vibe. But then I just started, like, I emailed the the comedy attic, the club that I started at. It's actually the hoodie I was just wearing. You emailed them? I emailed the owner because I was talking to a friend in the library and I was like, I think I'm going to drop out or I think I'm going to transfer. Like, I just can't do this. And they were like, you know, hey, there's that comedy club on campus. You know, you're here for a reason. Just try to make the best of it and email them or something. Like, just try to do something around the club. Try to do like marketing or whatever. Just get a foot in the door. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay. So I did that. And then it's a great friend. It was a really cool friend. Yeah. He lives in the city now, actually. I don't know if he knows that he's the reason I did that because I literally probably would have transferred schools. That's fucking And I crazy. probably would have gone to Chicago and I probably would have started comedy at Second City and done improv. And I probably would have been a different person. What a bummer that would. I mean, I probably would be an improv guy. You if you if you transferred on SNL, Sheboygan. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, I'm silly names Nathan. <laughs> I'm on a weekend update. <laughs> Your chair you rolls in. in. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Colin. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Colin. It's so funny. I just do every brown character that they need. <laughs> I'm doing every offensive accent. I get canceled in two weeks. So I don't know if he can do that, actually. Wait, what? Wasn't he born in Chicago? I don't know if that's cool. And SNL's like, we thought he was Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. They get, so, they get so bummed. They booked me and they're like, you're not Muslim? No, I just thought that you guys were, would be cool with anything. This would have been you after uh, after the Taliban took over Afghanistan. Hey, thank you for having me, Colin. <laughs> it's been a pretty... Pretty crazy few weeks. It'd be for dr- me. drunk Taliban or yeah. drunk uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, in an alternate world, baby, that would have been. Oh my god! But so he told you there was a comedy club, and you emailed them. What did you say in the email? I said, "Hey, I'm you know uh, I'm in the business school, and I would love to do some like marketing for you guys. I have a couple like ideas, just kind of some bullshit. I think I was like, oh, I'd love to do these like I did these like back like these back room. I don't know. I said back room like it's like a porn casting green room. They were these green room interviews where we would I would interview headliners, and they would just like talk about their first time doing comedy. You already did that, or you? That was what that I was pitched. Your idea. I was oh, like, hey, shit. maybe we could wow. do this. Okay, and I can't in with all these like ideas just to be like I really wanted this guy to like me yeah. and I didn't know who it was at the time but it was Jared the guy who owns it yeah, it's who's funny. one of my you know he's like almost like a dad to me yeah I, I went in and he literally could not have given less of a shit about any of it yeah. it was just so funny yeah. he was just like yeah we don't really want more <laughs> customer he was like we kind of have who we have we're doing good he really has the vibe of and that's why that club is so good is like he's like we don't really need to bring people that don't know about us yeah you know, we don't want to advertise to students and all. Like, I get that's yeah. a great idea, but we don't want them here. Yeah. And he's like, but the end of everything could be cool. And so he was just like, yeah, sure. All right, let's try next week. Just come in on Thursday. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I just slowly started doing that every week. I would just do that. And then I was just Oh, you kinda, did do that. So I would do that. Had you done any stand up yourself at this point? Uh, I'd done an open mic one time in high school. Oh, and I also had no idea how to film, edit, or do anything. <laughs> So I, I know, and then he also asked, he's like, we have a promo video that plays before shows. Like, but like, I kind of want a new one. Would you be able to edit that? And I went, yeah, for sure. No idea. <laughs> Never even had a video Love editing that. software. Love it. So then I just, I just YouTube tutorialed everything oh, for nice. a week straight. I just taught myself how to do all this shit, made a new promo video, did the whatever interview things. 
And then it just slowly progressed from there. And I would just hang out there at the club. I found out I could get in for free and watch shows. So oh, I was like, oh, yeah. just so watch everything. That was the best feeling. Yeah. And realizing you could like come, you know, you'd yeah. feeling like a little naughty. Like, am I allowed to stand back here? Yeah. It's a sold out show. And just being like, I think I can fucking stand here. Yeah. So I was doing that for like maybe three or four months. And then he was just like, hey, do you want to work the door? Like you're already here anyways all the time. Like you might as well just work the door. And I was like, wow. for sure. And then, oh, and then in this, in the window of this time, I had done an open mic there actually. And I brought so many people from my fraternity, from my <laughs> business fraternity, and they were all like, oh my God, he's doing a show, whatever. And it was, I was, it was so bad. Yeah. It was, and I did well, but like, it was just the most. It was like inside hack. jokes. No, it was just like, so, I think I had a joke about midgets or I like, get little people or, you know. What was it? You don't remember the. Uh, I think I remember the joke. You just, I'm just asking is Tyler has one of the best jokes like ever. Really about, good just about joke. his baseball team. Yeah. I don't really remember what the joke was exactly, but I just remember like, it just had like, it had the word midget in it. And it also had the N word, like referencing the N word. I think it was like, it was like, you know, like, uh, I was like, oh, I heard like midgets, uh, or, you know, sorry, like little people actually hate it when you call them the N word or something that I thought was like a funny misdirection. It was so too many things going on. It was on too many things. Shows. It was like the, the can't even quite follow it. Totally. Now. It was just so dumb. So it was like, but it was basically like, you know, just cr like, uh, whatever offensive. -y. Yeah, yeah. I had a bunch of like terrorist jokes. Just so that's like a huge swing for your second time ever. Yeah, totally. But that's what you do. You, I'm going to break comedy think. with you, this. Yeah, N word. You take of course. little person. Joke. I was the guy that commented on your, you know, video. <laughs> that's the same thing. You just have no self-awareness. So I remember doing that and then it got, it did really good. Like I had, I remember like it went really well and yeah. it was like really loud, but I also brought fucking 50 people. Yeah. And then I remember afterwards I talked to Jared about it. Cause I was like, you know, you kind of have this like, you know, that you, went well. You get off you and you're think floating. You're, you yeah. think you're hot shit. So then I talked to him about it the next day. I was like, Hey, you know, like, yeah, I really wanted to. So can I headline that now? Again. I, I think I, I forgot how I brought it up. I said something along the lines of like, you know, like I would love to do it again. And, you know, and he was just was like, he was like so blunt. He was like, yeah, man, look, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I poked my head out, you know, during your set just because I, you know, I like to usually see how people are going to be. And, and he was like, you were just, you were mean. And you're just, that's just not the way to do it. He was just like, you're going to have such a better time doing comedy if you're like, Wow. Just be nice and be funny. Also great advice. Like he said, you're that? getting it this was, from the very beginning. It was so humbling. Wow. And I remember, I remember feeling so horrible because yeah. I just wasn't trying to be mean or anything. I was just like, I just didn't know what comedy was. I thought it was just a, getting a reaction out of people and exactly. just anything that would get like an, Oh, like a shock value. Yeah. And it fucking checked me so hard. And it was the, probably the best, like it was, thank God that happened. Yeah. But I remember yeah. in the room being like, I didn't want to ever show my face again. I felt so embarrassed because yeah. I immediately realized I went, oh, of course, that's not who I am. He was like, you're nice. Like, just, you don't have to do that. Yeah, why be that And guy? I immediately was like, oh, I felt horrible. And wow. walking in there thinking that you're, he's about to like oh, crown you and just be totally. like, you run this club now. And he's like, 100%. yeah, that's kind of sucked. Yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. You're like, your stomach just turns. You're a like, holy shit. A thousand percent. It's nice to have someone to say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. seriously. That's really nice. He's the best. That's why it's like, for, he's always been like straight to the point, you know, no bullshit, best interest, which no, is a, why no one is like that in comedy, especially. Yeah. I mean, in life too, but like in comedy, everyone bullshits you. Yeah. I loved you. I thought you were so funny. I never want you to set foot in my comedy club again, but I loved you. Totally. I thought you were hilarious. Well, that's what was really cool. Every he... manager, you're so talented. Yeah. You're going to make it huge. I'll Just pass. not here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Also, can we get a drink later? Or can we hang out? Like, yeah. that's the other side of it. Yeah. No, he was so cool because it was like, it was both. It was like critical advice and being blunt and honest and hard truth and also not banned. You know what I mean? He could have been like, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He literally was like, he's you like, know, I see you can be better than that. It was, I know cool. you. Yeah. It was really crazy. Wow. That's really awesome. Dude. Yeah. And then it just from there, I, and then I figured it out. I immediately flipped and I went so self deprecating, like immediately, you know, then you go, yeah. Oh, this is yeah, the yeah, way yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then it does do better at the beginning. I'm sure. Right. Totally. Like, like as soon as you made that switch, you were, you started to have better sets probably immediately. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then, so the next, that was a, that was sophomore year. So the next two college that was years year. of college. Next two years of college, yeah. Then I just stayed around there. I started working the door. Then I clean. I cleared my name at the club. <laughs> you it's, cleared your name, as in just because. Oh, oh, it's oh, funny from that set. It's so funny because I remember after that being like, I'm that guy now. That was just like because we would, now once I became a local in the scene. Yeah. 
every guy that would come in from college, oh, this fucking guy brought all, all his frat, bro. We would shit yeah, on all that because uh-huh. they were the yeah. same guy. Yeah. It was the same thing I was yeah. doing. It was, it was, they saw Anthony Jesselnik or whatever, yeah. Daniel Tosh, and they thought, oh, I can just fucking say whatever I want. Yeah. Just offensive, cringy shit. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I was that guy. And then, you know, it's so funny that a lot of them have seen from that to now. To what you're just like a normal good comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. doesn't do that. In it's any so way. funny that they're like, wow, what a 180. One of them, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah. Imagine if you, one of the frat guys you saw that did it, like became a good comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's totally. such a trip. <laughs> Brett 100%. is funny. Yeah. Brett's funny now. Oh the my people that God. left the scene. Brett. Yeah. I don't think so. Brett Tucker. Yeah. The guy who did the rape jokes, four rape jokes in a row. hundred percent. The buddies. guy they got, the guy they got blacklisted from the open mic at the comedy <laughs> attic. It's I don't like, think he's funny. I know. It's crazy. People, you know, hey, people can change. Yeah, people can with change. enough shame. That that, can change. <laughs> yeah. that can do it. Enough yeah. honesty too. Yeah. Uh, Emil, thank you for doing. Uh, or sorry, thank you for coming into your session today. Thank um, you guys for. We I think will we got a lot out you of it. after we got a lot out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you spoke for a little bit as well. Yeah, that's um, great. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, thank you for doing it. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, guys. Um, yeah, we'll send you the bill. We, yeah, we'll, we'll send you the bill. We do have a we do have a bit of a thing to get to. Yes, I'm Got telling it. this really good joke that you should hear. Yeah. Tyler's gonna go tell go a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately we can't uh, continue but we'll have you back uh next week yes love we'll it see you next time. week and uh i got some oxycontin if you want thank you oh yeah like some oxy for the road. we have some oxy yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. take some from mind. the bowl yeah. <laughs> <laughs>